Dr. Clark in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. We're about to have another amazing chiropractic adjustment. We're here with Julie today and we're about to get it done. There it is. There it is. So how are you feeling today? What's going on with your body? I'm having a lot of lower back pain. I'm constantly sitting at a desk um, and I don't have the best posture. Absolutely. Where do you feel it in the low back? Is it like in the middle? Is it on both sides? Um, kind of in this pretty, area here? Yes, lower. Um, right in there? Yes. Okay. So she's referring to the top of the sacrum. Uh, the sacrum is a wedge-shaped bone that the whole spine puts all that pressure on top of. So when we're sitting, it causes a lot of stress because of obviously the, the way the body is compressing the spine on top of that sacrum area. Um, what about the rest of the body? How, how are the, how's the mid back, the shoulders? I can tell your, your posture is a little off. So look straight for me. And what we're going to notice when we look at a side view of your posture, what I'm looking for is to see where the ear is lining up with the shoulder, how the back, how straight it is or how curved it is and how everything's lining up. Let me, sh and, and then also the shoulders rounding forward. These are all indicators um, to let me know if the posture is not where it needs to be. Let me show you where correct is. So you're gonna sit up, there we go. The shoulders come slightly back. Okay. That Perfect. is, a, <laughs> I mean, it makes, it just, you just grew at least a few inches um, and your posture looks so much better and it just kind of opens everything up. We want to retrain the muscles and the ligaments so it's easy to stay that way and you're not having to force it because when you're forcing it, it feels awkward, right? Yeah, I'm forcing it right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Do you get a lot of stress in your shoulders or in the neck or in the any kind of headaches or what goes on there? Um, my shoulders do hurt sometimes, just like in between, mm -hmm. right here in between my shoulders, all like a pain there and just my lower back really. Okay. Let's go ahead and check a few ranges of motion. What you're going to do is you're going to take the chin, you're going to rotate your head one way for me as far as you can. Awesome. Let's go the other way. Very nice. You're going to take the ear, you're going to bring it down to one side for me. Okay, let's go to the other side. Ooh, big difference there. Do you see that? Mm -hmm, I feel it too. What does it feel like? Um, this, I'm kind of, I can't go anymore. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this, I'm like, I have a little bit more. Yep, you just feel like it's a little bit easier to move in that direction. So I can definitely see that restriction. And basically when it comes to the restriction of that area, that's going to deal with the cervical spine, specifically right here. Feel that? Oh yeah. What does it feel like? Um, it kind of hurts. Hurts? Feel like a little um, bubble in there, a little bump in there? Yeah, there's definitely kind of like a little rock. A little rock, a little knot. Exactly. That is totally what I'm feeling. You can feel it right there. And that is going to be right. The left side feels a lot better than the right side. Here it is right here. So today we want to bring a new adjustment for you guys. Um, a lot of the adjustments that we do are going to be either in a prone face down position or a supine uh, position. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a seated cervical adjustment today. And with a seated cervical adjustment, it's all about the line of drive that we're, we're using. Um, it's about how we're making contact with that specific area. And then the adjustment, uh, the follow through is going to be important. So you're going to see all of that happen. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to have you viewing from an angle where you're going to see the right side of the neck. We're adjusting right here. There's a little lump and a knot. And if you see my finger, so I'm just touching this area. This is sore, right? Oh, yes. Yep. So super sore. You're going to notice when I take my hand away, look how red it is. So we have a lot of um, red from just me touching and, and, you know, for holding that area. And it's causing a lot of these red marks that you can see that are just, um, you know, stressed areas. As this comes up, when I make an adjustment, we're coming around the front. We're going to actually use the middle finger and doing a contact on the lower cervical. So I have that joint in a really good position along my finger. We're gonna be bringing the head into a tilted position, but, but the line of drive of this direction is not just a lateral tilt for the head. I'm actually gonna tilt it a little forward like that. And you just relax your head. So this is a pivot point for me. And that pivot point's gonna allow me to, you know, hold the neck, take control of the neck. And then I can actually come up underneath the occiput here 
and I'm just holding the occiput or just relaxing. You can feel it's restricted. Good job. Wow. Goodness gracious. What did that feel like? <laughs> felt really good. Was that a big adjustment? Was, yes. Was it noisy? Yes. Yeah, super, I was not expecting that. Yeah, super noisy adjustment. And it was easy yeah. too, right? It like Yeah, the way I a had little nerve wracking at first, just my position, but it felt yeah. really good. The adjustment we're making on the other side, it's not as involved as the right side was, but that bone and joint needs to be released on the left side. This is gonna be slightly different. On this side of the adjustment, what we're doing is as I come around, we're gonna be making more of a sweeping motion and it's actually gonna be coming a little superior. So we're, we're taking that, that bone that was positioned over here. On the right side, we drop the bone down and over. On the left side, we're gonna be bringing it up. And to do that, Again, we find this specific segment that we're looking for, which is right there. We're gonna, again, just kind of tilt the head. Just nice and easy. Oh there it is. <laughs> Very specific adjustment. That was isolated to the C4 vertebrae, which is the fourth cervical vertebrae, right and left. Very specific. Did you feel how that was just like one key area right in the, the middle of the neck? Oh yeah, on both yep. sides. Yep, so very specific adjustment. That is, when you can isolate specific segments like that, you are gonna get uh, substantial results because those vertebrae are, that's a keystone for the movement and the motion of the whole entire neck and spine area. We are doing great. Let's go ahead face down. So, so what we wanna do right now is we wanna just see how the rest of the biomechanics of the body are um, doing. We're gonna be doing a couple of checks here. So some very specific checks. Um, first and foremost, if you watch any of our videos, you know how important it is to assess the lower extremity, uh, how important it is to ch check the iliums, uh, make sure that the sacrum is doing good, as well as the lumbar spine, all of that stuff is connected. An easy, simple check that we do is we bring the legs up and we're just seeing the, how the range of motion is. With Julie here, I can definitely tell that the right is restricted. So the right is supposed to be down more and it is not wanting to move correctly. When I'm doing that, there's a number of things that I'm looking for. What we're finding as I do that, and I'm seeing how the hips are shifting and pulling and which direction they're pulling, it's keying me into the sacrum, which is that center key, keystone. And it's letting me know that there's going to be some sacral irritation as well as some restriction on the sacroiliac joint. So the sacrum lining up with your ilium, which are the two hip joints. When I'm feeling in here, we're going to right there. We're just kind of feeling to see if there's any knots and any pressure points, which you can feel that right there. Is that a little tender, a little, yeah, for sure. a little bubble right there? And then, okay, the... Yep, right there on the right as well. Oh, yeah, that hurts. Yep, so super tender there. As we assess that, I want to check what's called the sacral base, which is that top angle of the sacrum. Um, we're just kind of feeling it. Ooh, there it is. Feel that? Yeah. So real sore on the sacral base, specifically on the left side. So all of this is indicating that we need to do a specific alignment that is going to allow us to drop down the left side of the sacrum bring the sacrum into a rotation. So it's gonna drop the left, it's gonna bring it over more towards the right on the bottom. It's gonna allow us to actually open up the left sacroiliac joint and pull it away. And then it's gonna allow us to also adjust the right sacroiliac joint with more of a superior alignment. So we're doing, um, if you were to think of this like a jar, we're gonna be unscrewing the jar. And we're gonna start on this left side. So let's bring this side up facing me. Now you, you see on the initial test, it was showing right restriction. As we got in there and did our palpation and our orthopedic testing and further evaluation, we started to realize it was the whole kinetic chain, meaning both sides of the sacrum, both of the ilium, as well as the lumbar spine. And that's how we're gonna address this is more globally. Again, this is like uh, if we're screwing in a jar, we're gonna go, counterclockwise, so we're rotating it over. Comes right over, right along the sacroiliac joint. This comes down. There it is, perfect. Ooh, that was a big one. 
<laughs> Let's go ahead. We're going to go to this side as well. Okay. So this comes up here. Now, remember on this side, it's going to be different. We're going superior. So superior means towards the top. We're going to be going towards the top. There's going to be a little anterior motion. That means towards the front. So we're going up and we're going forward. Superior anterior adjustment. And then I am going to add a third line of drive here, and that's going to be external rotation. So we're going superior up towards the head. We're going anterior towards the front of the body. And then we're doing external rotation where we're actually pulling the hip externally away from the midline. There it is. And then we'll go face down. Good job. Okay, and let's go ahead and check. Okay. So these are now moving equal. They're feeling pretty, pretty good. I can tell she's got some tension on her quads, um, which is just the front of the leg. That's from her having muscle um, tension from working out and things like that. So that is normal. That is doing so much better. How does that feel? I feel great. Yep, feels like it kind of opened that area up. Yes. Yeah, very cool. And again, um, when we're dealing with this from her sitting at her job a lot, that's why we have to go into so much depth and detail because it's not just, you know, let me twist my leg over and, and hear a pop and everything's corrected. It's very specific how everything's lining up, where the tense, tense points are, where the tension is, how the muscles are responding, the ligaments are responding, the joints are responding, and most importantly, how the nerve system is actually interpreting all of this and how the nerve system is responding, which controls everything. When we see hip and pelvic alignment issues causing low back dysfunction, we also need to address the anterior portion as well. We're going to check what's called the anterior superior iliac spines. Those are those two little knots you feel in the front, two little notches here. Um, we're also going to be checking to see how the, uh, the leg, uh, the muscles coming down into the knees are doing. We're going to be checking the ankles as well. Basically the whole kinetic chain. We can also check a couple of really important muscles in here. Um, iliopsoas muscles, super, super important as they have connections to the, the leg as well as the lumbar spine. And also the um, QL muscle, the quadratus lumborum, which is connecting your lower ribs to the top of those iliums. So there's several things we're gonna look at. Let's have you face up. You're gonna be on your back for me. So a real simple test that we can do here is when we're checking the iliopsoas muscle, you can come over and see what I'm doing with the legs. Basically, I'm going to let the leg come into an internal rotation. We're seeing how far down it goes. That's pretty good right there. So that's going pretty far. We're going to do the other side. That one's pretty good. Let's see. This is better. This one could be just a little better. Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah, so this one, you can see how far it goes down. This one could be a little better. That's going to let us know that we need to engage and activate um, a balance into the iliopsoas. What we're going to do is find the iliopsoas. It runs along the spine. We're connecting it through the anterior portion. There's going to be a little tender spot right here. Do you feel that? Is that sore? A little. A little sore. You're going to take a big breath and breathe in for me. As she's breathing, I'm putting more pressure down. Go ahead, breathe out. A little more sore, right? Mm -hmm. Breathe in again for me. Big breath in. Breathe out. A little more sore. This can be painful, but it's worth it. One more big breath in for me. Relax that all the way out. This is the last one. Good. Super tender? Super tender. Yep. That is a more tender area, so I will let you know when we're doing the iliopsoas, it is a super tender muscle, especially when it's been overused. Let's check. This one comes down. Look at that. So this comes down. Now look at this side. A moment ago when we did that, it was like here. It wasn't terrible, but now it comes all the way down. That's a positive indicator that we were able to reset it. That is doing amazing. Another check that we're going to do is just that basic figure four stretch. This is going to come here. You're going to let that right there. We're going to see how far the leg comes down towards the table. We're going to hold that anterior ilium. We're just going to 
just stretch a nice easy stretch. Is that a little sore? A little. Front or the back? Where are you feeling it? Um, more in the front. More in the front. Yep. So a little bit tight. Let's see how the other side responds. This is going to come over this way. Same kind of thing. I can already tell that this left, they're pretty close, but I can just feel that little bit of tension on the pubic symphysis, which is the middle where all of these ileums come and connect the center of our body. We're going to do a, a release in there. Basically, we're just going to come down. And what we're going to do is as I'm pushing, I'm doing... Bring this up. There we go. And we're going to do. Go. I know that's a lot. <laughs> Good job. Good job. We're coming over. Again, we're just coming up. Already moving better. Good. Yeah, that side doesn't hurt at all. Yep. Already moving better. And then we actually have to do a distraction. So we're coming down. We're going to be doing um, adjustments on the knee here. Feel the tenderness right there. This is gonna come up. We're checking to see the biomechanics of the knee. I see a restriction right on the medial portion. Comes, yep, right there. So we're coming under, we're just relaxing that. Comes forward. We're doing a slight rotation out. Good, very nice. We're gonna to go to the other side as well. Again, we're just loosening up everything. This side's easier, good. And then we're gonna do a nice stretch, help everything open up. Ooh, that felt great. Excellent. And then again on the other side, perfect. <laughs> we're gonna go face down, good. So we went ahead and moved through just about everything. Um, there's a few structures that we're not diving into today that we don't need to, but pretty close to everything down in the hip and pelvic area. We could get on the femur heads. We could get more into the uh, TFL or tensor fascia latte. We could get more into the IT band, things like that. We don't need to. We're going to let this adjustment settle for today, let it relax, and then next time Julie's adjusted, we're going to be able to assess those areas. We're climbing up into the thoracic spine, and when we're doing this, let that relax. Good. There it is. Good job. And then we're going to do a release for the scapula up in here and the upper thoracic spine. Good job. And then we're going to do a release on this side as well. Perfect. Let's go ahead and sit on up. <laughs> We're going to check the range of motion just to see how everything's moving. So let's go ahead and turn the head. Very nice. Let's go turn it the other way. Excellent. We're going to go ahead and bring the cheek or the ear down to one side. Awesome. And then let's go to the other side. Awesome. Good. Much better. I can see it moving. Yeah, this side I'll look. Like, yeah. actually kind of move. Awesome. How you feel? Good. Awesome. Stand up, let everything kind of relax, balance out. We'll go from there. Super awesome. High five. <laughs>